So today is lesson six. Um, I checked Blackboard this morning of the 38 students in the class. I've gotten 31 submissions um, for assignment one. Not great, not terrible. Um, if you are one of the seven students who hasn't submitted, please make sure that you submit today. Um, you can still get an 80% if you complete the assignment and it works fully, but you've got to submit it by midnight tonight in order to get that 80. By tomorrow, you're down to a maximum 60. I do not want to give anyone zero, but if I don't have anything to mark, I don't have a choice. And this assignment is worth 15%. That's a big chunk of marks to lose. So um, if you got caught leaving it late or you're stuck or you're watching the Super Bowl, um, please make sure you submit something at least for part marks today. So today, what we're going to do, uh, I'm going to talk about the midterm exam. So we're not actually going to see each other for three weeks because next Monday is family day. The week after is reading week, so we won't have another class together until March the 7th. So I'm going to talk about the midterm and exam in a minute. Then we're going to open up our PHP Flicks. We've enabled the ability to create and read data. And then today we're going to finish what we call the CRUD operations, create, read, update, and delete. We're going to start with delete, which is probably the simplest CRUD operation. And once that's done, we're going to change our existing um, artists, sorry, our existing uh, movie and movie de and save movie pages so that we can also use those same pages to both insert and update. So if we want to modify an existing um, movie, we can load the details in the form, make changes, save those changes. So at the end of class today, we'll have a full kind of uh, full range of create, read, update, delete, delete functionality. Okay, we'll also look at how when we have a drop-down list and we're editing, how do we pre-select the correct option in there? Um, so we will get that done working today. So no class next week, there's no lesson. We will also have a lab, but you will have, which will basically be um, practicing, update and delete. And the lab will be due Sunday night, the 6th. So you have three weeks to do it, which is loads of time. Um, basically due before the midterm exam. So there's no quiz this week and no class next week, just a lab that you'll have 20 days to do, which is plenty of time. Um, okay, so let's talk about the midterm. So the midterm will be held in class. Okay, so you have to be in the WebEx room um, at eight o'clock from eight to 11 on Monday, March 7th, so three weeks from today. So I'll be sure to open the WebEx room early by 7.50 and I will go over the instructions right at eight. If you come into the WebEx room at 8.05 or 10 after 8, you just have to read the instructions online because I'm only going to repeat them one time. Um, the exam will be a, a, a mix, will be a combination. There will be some multiple choice and it will be randomized, so not everybody will get the same questions. And you're only going to see one question at a time in the multiple choice. Okay? You won't see the whole thing. Um, and then there is a practical component where you will have to build a few PHP pages. Okay. Um, and, though, and you'll have to deploy those pages to AWS and integrate them, have them talk to the, your database on AWS. Okay. So there is some coding and there is some multiple choice. Okay. The exam must be submitted by 11 a.m. or it cannot be marked. I've had issues with this with online exams in the past where some people think that the end the time end at the time is just a suggestion <laughs> rather than a requirement. I will tell you right now, and I know one of my colleagues had issues with this just last week with the test he had, that students continued working after the end of the test and then um, ex expected that they should get a mark. I will tell you, if I don't have your files by 11 a.m., I can't mark them because I have to give everybody the same amount of time. Okay. Uh, there will also be several different versions of the exam, so not everybody will necessarily be doing the exact same version. So if you have a, you live with some, you know, you have a roommate and you are both in the same course, you can't do the exam together because there's a good chance that you will have exams that wind up being totally different. Questions from anybody? Yes, Monday is a holiday. 
The exam is on Monday, March the 7th. That is not a holiday. The holiday is next Monday, which is February 21st. Um, Tyler, is it one of those exams that you can't backtrack on? Um, fair question. I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I have to look at it. I haven't given this exam since last year and I changed them from, I will have to see how I set it up last year. Um, not that I will necessarily do it the same way. Um, Andres, good question. How many questions? I didn't say. Um, I think it would be in the neighborhood of 25 to 30 multiple choice questions. And then you would have to build somewhere between two and three PHP files. And the, the grade is split evenly between the two. Yes. Okay. Fair, fair point, Sarah. Um, that, it, that is true. That is, that is true. And you will have a lab, um, to do between now and the midterm and part of the lab is to also help you prepare for the coding section of the midterm. So the lab will basically be at home practice for the code work, for the work we're going to do in PHP um, Blix today and then some of the what I'm going to ask you to do on the midterm in coding will be fairly similar to that as well. So the lab will be good practice for the midterm. Are there any other questions about the exam? Okay, if there are no other questions, then let's fire up our PHP Flix application and get back to work on it. As far as your assignment one submissions, I will start marking them tomorrow. I don't know that I'll get through all of them, um, but they should be marked sometime this week. So I'm going to open up my open VPN and get connected so that we can use our database as usual. We'll start up our ZAMP server, our Apache server through the ZAMP control panel as usual. This should be getting pretty familiar by now. You'll want to do both of these things during your exam. And then we will grab our, go to our code editor and open up the project. So I should be able to go back to my local version of the site where we have our list of movies. We did some formatting with Bootstrap last week. We joined our genres and movies tables together. And we also added some styling here to our movie details form. So I've got a bunch of junk data in here. I'd like to be able to delete it. Now, right now, my only option to delete it is to connect through my SQL workbench and execute an SQL query to delete these movie records that I don't want. So we're going to add that functionality into our 
little web application. So how should we do it? What things, what are the steps we need in order to complete this task? What things do you think we're going to do in our PHP Flix site so that users can delete movies? What's anything you can think of that we need in here? Okay, we need a delete link or a delete button. Thanks, Daniel. Absolutely. Yep. And I mean, yeah, so it could be a button or link where, I mean, we could put it anywhere. Where would be typical when we have a list like an HTML table, tabular data, where on this page would you think, would you expect a delete link or delete button to go? Okay, yeah, typically I agree. Yeah, in, inside each row, and usually it would probably go at the end. I mean, we wouldn't put it, expect to see it like in the middle or even first. Typically it's gonna be over at the end. Okay, so some kind of delete or button here, I agree. Uh, we can look at both ways and decide if you want it. Yeah, the right side. Okay, and then what should happen when you click the button? Or the link? Yeah, we probably want some kind of confirmation. Why do we need a confirmation? Like we didn't have a confirmation here, right? Like when we click save, it doesn't say, are you sure you want to save? So why would we want a confirmation why would we want a confirmation on delete? I agree that we do. Why is it important to confirm delete? Yeah, thanks Tyler. Okay, because once that data is deleted, it is gone. And the only way to get it back is to like restore from a backup copy of, your, of our database. Okay, uh, I've had to do it before, it's expensive. It's time consuming and expensive. And often it means we're losing new data when we restore backups. And um, confirming deletes are even more important now that we have small mobile devices because, right? Delete issues on phones when we're, we're on touch screens, it's much easier to accidentally tap, you know, you have, a, you have a stubby thumb like me, very easy to tap the wrong delete button. So we do want to include a confirmation. Okay, so we'll have a button. It'll pop up a little confirmation. We're giving the user a chance to cancel the deletion. Um, and then what would happen? So after the user says, yes, I definitely want to delete, you know, the not numeric movie. What would happen after that? I have a delete button, I click it, I get another confirmation, like asking me again or just telling me. Um, okay, I suppose we could. Um, I, I think that might be a little onerous to give the user two confirmations. I think probably one is enough. Yeah, Sarah, I, I like that idea. Then we want to actually execute that deletion in the database. Like, let's remove this movie. And then um, we want to either show a message saying that the movie was deleted. And then we've got two choices. We can either give the user a link to come back to this page and they should see that the, the table has been updated and that movie that they selected is gone. Or we might even just automatically, maybe we'll do it that way first and then later we could add like an automatic redirect. So our delete page would almost be like a hidden page. It would take in the primary key of the movie, it would execute it in the database and then it would just bring the user right back here. But the delete page doesn't even really need to be visible. So let's start here. Let's kind of do this in pieces. So let's start with our movie details page. Uh, sorry, not our movie details page. This would be in the movies.php. So over here, I'm going to add 
first of all, I'm going to add one more column heading. I'll put on a fifth column heading that says actions. And we can add a delete button and then later on we can also add an edit button or edit link into that last column over on the right. And we could use text links, you can use icons, we could use buttons. So now we want our delete link or delete button in our new, in a fifth column after the genre name, right? So before we end our table row, we want, so now I've got an actions column, we want those delete links or delete buttons to go here. So I've added line 20, my new column heading, and I'm going to add one more set of TD tags. And in here, again, we could use a link or we could use a button. Now, the, it's going to be a little complex what we're adding here. So we will add, I'm going to add it as a link, but I'll make it look like a button. So I'll style it as a red button. And I'll use the BTN danger class from Bootstrap because danger will print stuff in red. So you're going to get a red button with white text. And our button will say delete. So this is just going to display the button. The button isn't going to do anything yet. We're going to have to add some more code on here. It's going to get a little more complicated, but we can, this should give us the right visual representation. So I'll just go and refresh, right? So we want something like this. So right now these don't do anything. That's okay. So our next step, we're going to kind of build our button in pieces. We now need an href attribute. So we're going to go link each of these buttons. It's going to go to delete movie.php. So this should actually make the buttons active links. When I was clicking them before, they didn't go anywhere. They looked, they looked correct, but they didn't do anything. They were just another pretty face. Now we're adding the href attribute. So when we click one of the delete buttons, we're actually going to get taken to the delete page. We will add the confirmation later. We'll add it in a bit because we're going to need a little bit of JavaScript. It's going to get a little complicated. So add your href. I'll go back and look at the page now. So if I refresh, go and pick one of these incomplete records and click delete. So now my link is active. It takes me to delete where we get a 404 not found. That's fine. We haven't built this page yet. We're going to build it next. So this behavior is expected. Um, however, there's two things missing from my link still, from my delete button. Obviously, one is the confirmation. What's the other problem with these links? They work, but they're incomplete. Why are they incomplete? So what we've done so far isn't wrong, it's just not, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't have everything we need. Okay, yes, Shawshank, good point. We don't have the PHP file, that's true. So we are gonna have to build it. But even once we build that file, the link itself is missing something. Okay, yes, it's missing a confirmation, that's true. It's missing one more thing. So we will build the PHP file. We will build the confirmation. It doesn't delete the data yet, yep. When we go to the delete page, 
the delete page is going to need some information. What information do we need when we get here? Okay, Tyler, you're close. We're not actually going to use post in this case because we don't actually have a form. So post is when we have an HTML form that we're submitting, but you're on the right track. Amit, we will add a login, but not yet. Right now, our site is public, so anybody can delete. We will add that later on, but it's gonna take us a few classes. We'll deal with that a little later on with authentication. Well, I've got like about 15 movies right now. Thank you, Viraj. We need the movie ID, don't we? When we call delete movie, this page needs to know. We don't want to delete all the movies. We only want to delete the one in the row the user clicks. So we need to pass the movie ID along. And instead of using post, we're going to use get. So in our href, we are going to add on as a parameter, we're gonna add movie ID equals, and then we wanna take the current movie and append the primary key value on. So I'm gonna put in a single quote, Yeah, I know this syntax is tricky, so I'm adding this on. Everything I've highlighted in blue is in between the PHP and the double font closing double quote. So good catch for you, good catch virage for you to spot that. Right? So when we load delete movie, it needs a parameter that we will pass as part of the URL. We're gonna pass the movie ID along. So that when we run our SQL code and our database connection to delete the movie, we know exactly we're going to use that ID number to identify the specific record we want to get rid of. So I'm going to just save and try this out. So now if I refresh my movies page, every time I click a different delete button, we should see a different movie ID in the address on the next page. So when I click this one, my ID is 1,000. When I click the next one, 1,001. So we're going to need to read that URL parameter so that we can delete only the record that the user chose. Now our link is going to get even more complicated because we also need that confirmation. So we can use a little bit of JavaScript for this. Okay, so I'll actually just paste this right in the chat in case you're struggling with the syntax of it. Okay, so we've put the movie variable, it's outside of the literals because this is a variable, so that's why I've closed the single quote concatenated our ID, closed the, and then reopened our single quote for our string literal. So we also want to use a little bit of JavaScript. We'll put it in a separate script file so we can use that JavaScript to um, confirm any deletion anywhere in the website. It doesn't, we might want to reuse that function if we have the ability to delete other things besides movies. So I'm gonna go to my Explorer here. In my root folder, I'm gonna make a new folder called JS. So any JavaScripts that we're gonna write will go in here. And inside my JavaScript folder, I'll make a new file. Yeah, Andres, that's what we're gonna do. It's going to be a modal JavaScript confirmation. 
there's many different ways you could do the confirmation. But I, we will pop up a JavaScript window with an OK and a cancel and a message. It's close, Joshin. It's not an alert because an alert, it, it does pop up a Moto message, but there's only an OK there. So we're going to use a function that's similar to alert, but instead of including only an OK button, that pop-up will have an OK button that returns true and a cancel button that returns false. Does anybody know what that method is called in JavaScript? It's a built-in method to the JavaScript language. So we're going to return. So alert is a modal JavaScript pop-up with an OK button. What's the function called in JavaScript that gives you a modal pop-up with both an OK returning true and a cancel returning false? Starts with a C. Thank you, Tyler. So we are going to return. Don't forget this keyword return. Return confirm. You can see my code editor recognizes the confirm method. You say, are you sure you want to delete this? So there's our generic JavaScript. You can use this in your projects or your labs. You can copy it word for word. That's fine. We can use this anywhere. So now we have this function that we want to execute every time one of those delete buttons is clicked. And then this return confirm, right, confirm returns a Boolean. So the OK button will return true and the cancel button will return false. So how, how do we get this script to get be called now? When we click one of these buttons, we have there's two steps we need in order to be able to run this script when we call the button. Okay, we're going to use the on click function of the button. Yep. Tyler, yes, you could add a string parameter here to the confirm delete. And then you could append it on if you want. And yeah, that's right, Mark. So we've got to embed the JavaScript file. First of all, we have to have access to it so our movies file can see the script. And then we can add a click handler. So Tyler, I will let you take a stab at that. It's going to make it the code a fair bit more complicated. So I'm going to leave it out. But it's a great idea. And if you want to give yourself a challenge, you can do that. So first, as Mark said, we have to link the script file. So I'll add in the header, my script source equals JS. So we'll link in our script file and that way we have access now to that JavaScript function. There's other ways you could do this as well. You could use jQuery. We could attach that handler um, based on a class of our button. So there's, there's a number of different ways we could do this. So I'll just break my tag into multiple lines so it's a little easier to read. Thank you, Sarah. We probably should, yeah. I mean, it's not a big deal because it's a teeny tiny JavaScript file. Um, there's four lines in it, but yes, for proper... Uh, so Scott doesn't beat me over the head. Yes, I should add defer. I'll go and do that. So on click, we will return... Confirm delete. Okay, so we're going to add that event handler... 
that Josh and, and Amit mentioned. We're going to have an event listener using OnClick. And I will go back up and add the defer to my JavaScript. So I'll just go back up here and yeah, we'll just add our defer. So the JavaScript will load once all the HTML is done loading. So if we go back and try our delete links now, if I click, I should get a pop-up. If I click cancel, then we should not get taken to the delete movie page. If I click OK, then my link should stay active, our link should stay active, and we should get transferred to the next page. We'll give this a try. So I'm going to refresh. I get my pop-up. If I click cancel, we stay here. If I click OK, now our link fires. Okay. These, the keyword return, if yours isn't working, then you probably missed the keyword return. It has to be there. If we don't use return in both the onclick handler and the JavaScript method, the pop-up will come up, but the users, the choice of OK or cancel won't be evaluated. I will just show you this. If I miss the return, let's say here, I'm going to get a, a pop-up, but even when I click cancel, the page is going to transfer to delete movie go back and try it this way. I'll click delete. And when I say cancel, the cancel request gets ignored. So that return, this keyword is required. Otherwise, it does not evaluate true or false. It just defaults to true. So that little return is key. Yep. Here is the and you'll want to make sure your script file is inside the folder. We're looking in the path in the JS folder. So this source is only going to work if your file has this name and it's also in the folder called JS. Okay, it is 10 to 9, so what I will do is um, I will strip out my passwords. Um, I know this is getting cumbersome to do. I will give me a minute. I will upload everything we've done so far to GitHub. We will take a 10-minute break, and then when we come back, we will build the delete movie page that evaluates the ID, deletes it from the database, gives the user a confirmation message, and links, lets them link back to the movies page. Once we have that done, then we will also want to add the ability to edit a movie, load our form where it should be all pre-filled out, and then we can save changes to the database. Okay, uh, let's take a 10-minute break here. We'll be back. <laughs>